In this video, I'll explain how to perform basic CRUD operations with Mongo shell scripting. Hopefully, you have MongoDB installed already. If you don't, it's pretty simple. If you're using a Mac, I highly recommend you use Homebrew. If you're using Windows, the binary installer should be fine. In either case, the links I've provided here on the screen should get you going pretty quickly. As an overview, we're going to open two terminal windows. The first terminal window is where we'll run our MongoDB server. The second terminal window is where we'll actually do our Mongo shell scripting. If you'd like to follow along, all of the code you see in the rest of this video is available if you clone this GitHub repo. Now before we jump into the code, we'll need to get our MongoDB server running. So open up a terminal window and enter the command mongod. On my machine, I need to pass it a few arguments. It's probably different on your machine. If you're not sure of the exact arguments that you do or do not need to pass the mongod command, just refer to your installation documentation. Once you've got your MongoDB server running, we can minimize this window and we won't need to look at it again. Okay, let's take a look at example number one. First, let's look at the actual code. So open up your code editor and open up the file ex1.js. Let's look at lines two and three. We're creating two variables here. Let's forget about the madman variable for now. We're just setting it to null and we don't need it for a couple of minutes. Let's look at the db variable. This variable represents a MongoDB connection. We're using the connect command and we're passing it a string. Now, you might be saying, hey, wait a minute, you know, I've worked with Node before. There's no connect method or connect global. That's true, but this is not Node. It's, it's like we're working in the Mongo shell, but instead of passing it commands one at a time in the terminal, we're writing a JavaScript file and then passing this JavaScript file to the Mongo command. So we're using functions or methods that are recognized by MongoDB. So just keep that in mind when you say things like connect or insert or find, which we'll talk about in a second. So let's talk about what's being passed to the connect uh, function. We're passing it a string that has three things. The first thing is an IP address. And this IP address, 127.0.0.1, represents the local machine or our computer. After that, we got a colon and then 27017. 27017 is the default port for any MongoDB connection. And the third thing after the slash is the word madmen, which could have been anything. I'm just using that word to represent the name of our database. And what this is saying to MongoDB is, hey, let's connect to the madmen database on port 27017 of the IP address 127.0.0.1. Now what's pretty cool about MongoDB is that if the Madman database does not exist, it creates it and then connects to it. If it already exists, it simply connects to it. Let's look at line number six. So here we're saying DB, which represents the database connection we just created, names, which represents a collection called names, insert, this document. Now similar to the connection command, the connect command, MongoDB will create the names collection if it does not exist. If it does, it will simply proceed and take that insert command and insert this document. So we're saying, hey DB, if there is a names collection, great. If there isn't, please create it. And then after you're done creating it, please insert this document. And this document has one property it's called name and the value of the name property is Don Draper. Next on line number nine we're using this all madman variable that we created up on line number three. Well we're going to set it equal to all of the documents in a database. So we're saying hey DB for the names collection find everything and it's going to be everything because we're pa we're not passing an argument to the find method. So when you call the find method and pass it nothing, it returns everything. So this variable, all madmen on line number nine, will contain a reference to every document in the database. Finally, on line number 12, we're going to iterate that collection of database documents. So we're saying while all madmen has next. So keep in mind, all madmen is a variable that contains a reference to every document in the database, and that reference happens to have a method called has next and has next says 
as long as there is at least one more document to look at, uh, which basically returns true or false. So while this is true, we're going to look at the next record, use the print JSON command to print the next record. So while all madmen has at least one more record to look at, print the next record of all madmen. So let's see this code in action. I'm minimize this, open up a new terminal window, and first we need to make sure we're in the right directory. So I'm gonna type CD space, and then drag this folder over and I can see that now I'm in the, the folder that contains the code that I cloned from the github repo so now type mongo ex1.js see what happens okay so we connect it to the database it shows it a couple times don't worry about that but look at this line here we see one document from our names collection of our mongodb database now go back to the code and look at what we did here. In the code, we said insert one document and then loop over all the documents in a database and output each document. So this line right here correlates to this. It just so happens that we only inputted one document into the names collection. If we had inserted five documents, you would see five of these lines. So with that said, let's now look at example number two in where we'll actually uh, insert a few more documents into the database. Open up your code editor and take a look at the file ex2.js. So things here are somewhat similar to the first example. We're creating two variables on line two and three. The all madmen variable will be null for now, and the db variable represents the connection to our MongoDB madmen database. Then on line six, seven, and eight, we're simply inserting three documents into the names collection of our database. And then on line number 11, just like we did in example number one, we're using the all men min variable we created up here, and we're setting that variable equal to every record in the database. And then we're going to loop through or iterate over all of the records or all the documents in the names collection of our database using the print JSON method to print that document or each document to the console. Well, let's see that in action. So bring up the other terminal window and in that window type the command mongo ex2.js. Now we see an output that is similar to example number one, but there's just three more records or three more documents in the names collection. So there's the first document that we did in example number one, Don Draper, and then there's these three additional documents. If you bring your code editor back up, you can see that these three lines here correlate to these three lines here. You can see that we inserted these three documents and there they are. So once we did the iteration or loop over all the documents in the names collection of our database, there were four records instead of one. So now in example three, we're going to look at how to make changes to one of the documents in the names collection of our database. So now take a look at the file ex3.js. So we're creating the same two variables as we have in the previous examples. DB equals a connection to our MongoDB database, and all madmen for now will be null. Next, we're going to use the find method of the names collection of our database. And because we're not passing anything to find, we're getting every record in the database. And we're using the for each method to loop over or iterate all the records in the database. And the for each method allows us to create a variable that represents the current iteration. So for each iteration of the names collection, we're going to have this variable, this doc, which represents the current document being iterated over. And on a high level, what we're saying, if this doc, if this doc dot name equals Don Draper, then we're going to do something, which basically means we're going to update that record. And so if this doc.name equals Don Draper, we're going to use the update method of the names collection, and we're going to pass it two objects. The first object allows us to identify the record that we're going to basically, or the document that we're basically going to overwrite. So because this, this doc has an ID property, an underscore ID property, we're saying, well, 
the document with the ID property of this doc, doc dot ID, replace it with this new object or this document that has the name property of Dick Whitman. Why? Because we all know that Don Draper is not Don Draper. He's really Dick Whitman. So now that we've updated that record, we're going to once again set all madmen to equal every record and database and then just loop over every record and database and output it. And it's just for demonstration purposes for us to see our change. So let's bring up the other terminal window and run the command mongo ex3.js and the output that we get is pretty much what we expected where there's still four documents in our names collection three of them have not changed but the first one has it used to say Don Draper as the name now it says Dick Whitman why because right here we said if this if this doc.name equals Don Draper change it to Dick Whitman so this line right here line number 10 correlates to what we see right here so we've updated a record in our database, or more specifically, we've updated a document in the names collection of our database. So now let's take a look at how you can delete a document in the collection of your database. All right, now take a look at the file ex4.js. So in this example, we once again create our two variables, db and all men men. But here, we're going to get a reference to every record or every document in the names collection, use the for each method to iterate over every document in the names collection, and we're going to use the name property of the this doc variable that represents each document that's being iterated over, and we're saying, hey, if the name property equals Dick Whitman, then we're going to delete that record and database or remove that document from the names collection. So we're using the remove method of the names collection and we're identifying the document by saying well remove the document whose underscore ID method matches this doc dot underscore ID so remove Dick Whitman then once again we're setting the all madmen variable to equal every document in the names collection and we iterate over that collection to output each document and this is for demonstration purposes so bring up the other terminal window and in that terminal type the command mongo and then ex4.js and we should see three records in our names collection instead of four and that's exactly what we see we see these three records which are still there but the record that had the name property of Dick Whitman is missing why is that because here we looped over every document in the names collection we identified the document that had the name property of Dick Whitman. And when we found it, we used the remove method of the names collection. And we said, if it has an underscore ID property, it's equal to this doc dot underscore ID, remove it. And we removed that document from the collection. So now that you know how to remove a document from a collection, let's talk about how to uh, drop a database, something that you probably won't want to do too often, but at least you'll know how to do it. Now take a look at the file ex5.js. So this file is a little bit different. Um, we do have our db variable, which represents our MongoDB database connection. And we have the variables i and dbs, which they don't really matter. They're used for demonstration purposes later on. What matters most here is simply lines 2 and line 7. Line 2, we create a connection to our database. Line 7, we drop the database. So in line 7, we're deleting the database Mad Men. So we're saying our connection, db, db, drop database. So whatever database we're currently connected to, drop it. And line number 7, we're done. The Mad Men database is now deleted. Lines 10 through 16 are purely for demonstration purposes only. And all I'm doing here is getting a reference to all of the databases that are available, looping through them and outputting the name of each database in the console. Before, we've been looping through all of the documents in a collection. Here on line number 10, I'm getting a reference to all the database names, and then I'm looping through all the databases, and I'm outputting the name of the database. So I'm just using I as a counter to show that we're really counting something here. So this will all make a lot more sense in a terminal. So bring up your terminal and type the command mongo ex5.js. 
and you can see that we see that counter zero and one. We see the word database, the name. We've got two databases to us, admin and local. So these two lines here correlate to this line here, print I plus the word database colon space plus the name of the database. So we're counting this one database called admin, one database called local. But what you don't see is a database called madmen because we've dropped it. And I can kind of illustrate this even further. If I go into the Mongo shell, first I'll run example one again. So we know that we have a, a madmen database now. And if I go into the Mongo shell and I say, show dbs you can see there are three databases now admin local and madmen so we know the madmen database exists now so i'm going to exit the mongo shell and i'm going to run example number five again and then look madmen is missing there's just admin and local so the point here is that the drop database method is the command you use to drop a database in MongoDB. Once again, it's probably something you're not going to want to do too often, but if you ever need to, you now know how to do that. This video covered only the most basic areas of CRUD operations with MongoDB shell scripting, but I hope it was helpful to you and I appreciate you watching. For more web development tutorials, please visit kevinchisholm.com video. Yeah. <laughs>